Cold cases are often marked by scattered pieces of evidence, an abandoned car, a rubber glove. But without a breakthrough, cases can remain unsolved for decades. Like in the murder case of Tanya Van Kulenborg and Jay Cook, which went unsolved for more than 30 years. The team at Parabon Nanolabs cracked it in three days using DNA. You know, DNA determines the color of your eyes, the color of your hair, the shape of your face. We can read all of that out of the DNA and actually generate new information. To understand how genetic genealogy companies like Parabon Nanolabs get such seemingly miraculous results, we have to take a closer look at DNA itself. The information in DNA is stored as a code in four chemical bases. The sequence of these bases, your DNA sequence, determines the information that is used to build and maintain you. Kind of like the way that letters of the alphabet form words, and words form sentences. When investigators analyze DNA, they are looking for what different sections of the genetic code might tell them. We have sort of a default set of analyses that we do, and that's what we call basic phenotyping. So that is eye color, hair color, skin color, ancestry. Phenotyping can give investigators an idea of what the perpetrator looks like. But in cold cases, knowing what a suspect looks like is often not enough. Narrowing the search down to specific individuals takes a special tool, genetic genealogy. So that means taking that data that we produce and uploading it to GEDmatch, marking it as a law enforcement sample, and then running comparisons. GEDmatch is a voluntary open access genealogy website where users upload their genetic data in order to find out more about their family trees. GEDmatch's main tool compares one set of genetic data against every other set in their database. We're looking for shared DNA. So we're essentially looking for big pieces of the genome that our person has that's so long, so much sharing that it wouldn't happen by chance. So basically every generation that you are removed from someone, you're going to share less DNA on average. And so what we're looking for is hoping to find someone at approximately the third cousin level or closer. Beyond a third cousin, things get murky. Past that point, there's not enough DNA shared to tell how exactly two people are related. But even if a third cousin or closer match comes up in Jed match, getting from the match to a suspect is hard work, especially when crucial information like ages and names are unknown. The Jed match part is actually the very small minority of the amount of work that goes into genetic genealogy. If there's a public family tree, we might be able to use that, but maybe there isn't. And then it's just researching through public records, you know, a birth index, a census records, newspaper archives, obituaries, uh, even things like social media. It requires building out an extensive family tree back to a common ancestor, and then following branches forward again down the tree to the present day to find the right person who was in the area of the crime and whose age and physical characteristics match the description of the perpetrator. It's a lot of legwork, uh, but in the end, what we come back with is, you know, in the ideal case, when you've got great matches and a lot of information, we're able to go back to the agency and say, here's a possible name of your person of interest. If the person of interest is still alive and at large, investigators may attempt to match the DNA they have to DNA they gather from the person of interest, like from a discarded chewing gum or a used coffee cup. They then run a different kind of DNA analysis called STR, the kind that's often used in paternity tests to determine how closely the two samples match. In the last six months since we started doing genetic genealogy, we've helped solve more than 20 cases. The most recent one it was 45 years old. So these are cases that it's entirely possible they never would have been solved without the information that we're giving to them. In the case of Tanya Van Kulenborg and Jay Cook, DNA offered closure to their families. Had law enforcement never had access to genetic genealogy, I don't believe this case could ever be solved. 